For anyone who loves politics, this year is turning out to be one of the most intriguing years to follow the myriad of races for state and federal offices. Pat Scully is a political commentator who runs an enormously popular blog called The Hanging Chat. I check it every single day. And what you do is you Google, you put in The Hanging Chat, and it'll come right up. Um, first of all, let's, uh, that's a very interesting name. I want you to explain that. Um, it's a combination of The Hanging <laughs> Chad, which we all yes, know from the yes. Florida presidential election, and the shad, which is our state fish. And having worked for the Senate Democrats for so long, it always sort of humored me that we actually have a state <laughs> fish. So I combined the two, and That's it's sort creative. of caught on. Yes, I like it a lot. And I don't even know where to start. I mean, we have so we could spend mm. the whole show talking about stuff, but let's just jump right in with um, with a serious topic about Tom Foley. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, the news of his two arrests has recently come out. John Lender reported on that. One incident, perhaps less serious than the other, uh, the more serious one being um, that he, his ex-wife says that she, he ran her and her son, their son, off the road in a car. Um, what, what should we know about these arrests, do you think? Well, I think we need to know more. One thing you can count on, a lot of people have asked me how this is different than Dick Blumenthal misstating his service in Vietnam. Is this going to be the thing that brings him down? The difference here is that his fellow Republicans are not going to let this go. Both Oz Grebo and Mike Fideli, the other two Republican candidates for governor, uh, all three in the primary, have come out and said, you've got to come clean with this. You have to unseal the records. You have to uh, really show transparency on this issue. So it's the Republicans themselves that are fighting over this. And I think uh, you make a good point. There is, a, a rightly so, an air of action about domestic violence and domestic abuse. And if this has anything to do with it, um, that he needs to clarify, although we should mention that the charges were dropped in right. both cases. So um, do you, are you surprised that at this point, because uh, the story's been out for a couple days now, uh -huh. um, uh, that he hasn't come out? I am sort of surprised that he hasn't clarified a few things. He uh -huh. said it's all in the past, they were minor incidents. That may be okay for him and his supporters, but it may not be okay for the other Republican voters in the primary. And again, if his rivals are going to keep this in the forefront, and I'll, I, I'll bet you'll see maybe some negative TV ads before August 10th, the day of the primary. So I don't think this is over by any stretch. Okay. What do you think, who do you like in the governor's race? I mean, that notwithstanding. Uh, you were pretty strong, I think, in your analysis of the um, debate between Lamont and L M Malloy. Mm -hmm. um, you basically said Lamont got crushed, right? Well, I, I think that, strangely enough, Lamont's ahead in the polls, clearly, and has a healthy lead. Mm -hmm. But in, in all due respect to my very good friend, Mary Glassman, um, I think I'd rather be in Malloy's shoes right now because although he's behind in the polls, he wasn't the candidate that spent millions and millions and millions of dollars of his own money to be up on TV for months and months mm -hmm. and didn't put any distance between them. Malloy now has his public financing, uh, more than $2 million. He's now up with TV ads. So I think he has the big mo, as they say. He's got the momentum right now. Uh, he's also, his TV spots anyway, show that he's a tried and tested leader in the city of Stanford, as opposed to Lamont, who is a su successful businessman, but hasn't served in an elected office. So what can Lamont do, you think? Well, I think Lamont has to show uh, where he is the strongest. I'll pick a couple of issues. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and obviously he has to appeal to the Democratic base, which supported him in, when he challenged uh, Joe Lieberman and beat him in the Senate primary in 2006. But he lost the general election. So he's going to have to pick his spots as to where he wants to go up against Malloy and show a difference with them. I think in both cases, both the Republicans and the Democrats, the facade of civility is starting to crumble. Definitely. You've got the Republicans hitting Foley on his arrests, and you've got Lamont calling on Malloy to pull his ad that claims he helped create 5,000 jobs in Stanford. Right. And as far as that issue is concerned, and I've written this in my blog, you can do anything with statistics. And it's a fact that at some point when, when Dan Malloy became governor, at some point, or he became mayor of Stanford, at some point while he was mayor, there were 5,000 more jobs yeah. in Stanford. <laughs> now, were there 5,000 more when he left than when right. he started? I mean, you can do all sorts of crazy things with right. statistics. All right, let's switch um, to a former governor, John Rowland. Uh, by the time this airs, uh, he will have been subbing on WTIC radio. What do you think? I mean, is that good or bad? And, and, and what do you expect him to really say? Well, I think the folks that run WTIC, and I should... Full disclosure, I was, when Colin McEnroe had his afternoon show on WTIC, I was his get permanent guest host. 
So I know all the folks there, right. and, and they know what they're doing. They know they'll get ratings. Yeah. Now, whether it's good or bad to have him there is one's own taste. I know I'll be listening. Do you think he's going to say anything, I don't know, uh, controversial or uh, revealing about his legacy? I, I doubt it. I, the, the one time I did see him uh, <coughs> come out and talk, uh, was on Fox News, the national, your Fox national, and he gave a little interview about what to do and what not to do is when you get in trouble, and maybe he'll throw a little wisdom out there. Um, but I, I think you'll see it pretty much down the middle, and anybody who knows John Rowland knows him to be a very personable person. And uh, he's employed now. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, served his time, so to speak, and I think he'll get some good listeners. Yeah, we'll be listening, certainly. Okay, let's move to the other hottest race, of course, is the race for Senator Dodd C. Right. What, do you, what do you make of Blumenthal v. v. McMahon? Well, I, right now, it's no race. Yeah. Blumenthal is far and away going to win this race. He's ahead by 20 points, I believe. He was ahead by 25. But that's like winning a baseball game by 25 <laughs> runs and the other team scores five runs. Yeah. Big deal. You're still, you're still whooping the other one. Yeah. Yeah. And to this day, I still haven't seen a real good argument for why Linda McMahon, a businesswoman, um, is qualified to be a U.S. senator. She hasn't made that case, at least not to me. Mm -hmm. I hear party officials, Republican Party officials, talk about, well, Blumenthal has done this wrong. He sued too much. He misspoke about Vietnam or, in some people's eyes, misled about Vietnam. But that's not a reason to vote for Linda McMahon. Yeah. They need to, it's very telling when Republican Party officials talk about what's wrong with Blumenthal, not what's right with Linda McMahon. Interesting, so, interesting. As of now, I think it's no contest. Okay, we only have about 30 seconds. Let's talk about um, the races that no one's really talking about yet. I mean, is it like Congressman Chris Murphy, Courtney, are they in trouble? I mean, they have challengers. They all have challengers. I don't think they're in particular trouble. Um, but I do think statewide the race for controller is, is interesting mm -hmm. with Kevin Lembo, right. uh, who has been the hardest working candidate and has a great staff that I've seen this year, uh, against Mike Jarjura, the mayor of Waterbury, right. who won a campaign by passing out pencils as a write-in. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of a wild card, but I see Lembo uh, prevailing in that. And you also have to remember that all the state house and state senate seats yeah. are up, too. I know. There's just so much to cover. I there's mean. way too much to cover, and <laughs> most people are at the beach August 10th, I know. so it's, it's, a, it's very cliched, but it really does all depend on voter turnout. Right, right. Okay, well, we'll have to have you back, Pat, Pat Scully, to have some analysis in the, in the months to come, Thanks, certainly Laura. in the weeks to come. Thanks, Thank Pat. You. All right, well, ahead is Connecticut's capital city in crisis. In just a few weeks, the former mayor has been convicted. A new mayor has taken over. How is the transition going to go? We'll talk about it coming up.